Hey everybody, it's Hacking Month here at IT Pro TV, and we thought what better way to get the word out than to actually demonstrate some things that you can hack or hacking demonstrations. And they might be things that you would learn in a CEH or Pentest Plus, or even some of our skills-based courses such as web app pen testing. If you want to learn more, stay tuned. Hi everyone, I'm Daniel Lowry, an edutainer here at IT Pro TV, and today we're going to take a look at an IDOR attack which is a insecure direct object reference. Before we get into that though, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button to learn more and always be aware of our content. And uh, we, we got new stuff coming out all the time, so check that out. Now, to iDoor time, right? What the heck is an iDoor? Well, basically it's where someone has coded into a web application something that they shouldn't have given you access to, but you do. Uh, something sensitive that you could change, like, I don't know, a password or a price things of that nature, anything that you should not be able to manipulate and modify, they've accidentally given you the ability to manipulate and modify. So this is what we want to avoid. But if we're testing for those, doing something like a bug bounty or a web app penetration testing, these are things that you want to be on the lookout for. So let's jump into my computer. I've got a, uh, an application up here called the BWAP or the broken web application, purposely broken. And it does a great job of doing um, demonstrations for us. And today we are going to order some tickets. This is this web application. I've got this, how many movie tickets would you like to order? And it tells me right here that they are 15 euros per ticket. So if I want to order one ticket, I hit confirm. And when I scroll down, I can see that we ordered one movie ticket. The amount charged from my account automatically was 15 euros. Thank you for your order. So it's charging me 15 euros per ticket. That's a lot of money for a movie ticket. I'd really like to change that if I could. And maybe the developer of this site has accidentally allowed me to do ver that very thing. So what are we gonna do? I've actually been funneling all my requests that I've been making. So when I hit buttons or go to websites and I hit links, they're actually being intercepted so that I can view them with a burp suites. I've got burp suite right here. If I go to my HTTP history, I can see I've got that request right there and it shows. There it is, insecure direct object reference and you know, we can move these things out a little bit if we can. So you can see the whole thing, .php. So there's the page, there's the post all sorts of wondrous goodness that's happening here. But that's not that's not all, there's more, that's right. Let's uh, look at the actual request, which is down here, which we can then modify. So let me, let me, if I can use my mouse, there we go, grab that, pull that up. And you can see in this body that there's all sorts of things going on, like what host and the user agent that was used to make this request. And if I scroll down and I keep moving, I can see down here, the data that went along with this request. Ticket quantity equals one. Well, that's right, I, I ordered one ticket, and then I see the ticket price, right, which is 15 euros, and then the action that was taken, which is order. So it's basically building a, a query to the web application to say, this is what I want to do, and these are the parameters in which I want them to occur. Well, the, hopefully you're seeing the problem here. Now, this is a request. I can easily intercept this request when I'm making the request, when I hit that order button. And I can do that by stopping it when it reaches this program, Burp Suite. Let me show you real quick. Let me get zoomed out. And what I'll do is I will go to this intercept option and turn the intercept on. Now any request I make will actually get stopped and allow me to modify it before it gets sent along down the road. All right, let's go back to our application here. I'm gonna order 100 tickets. You can see that right there. Now, this should be charging me 15 euros each, right? But what happens? Well, we'll see if that is the case. Once I hit confirm, you'll notice Burp Suite pops up saying, hey, I've grabbed that request. You wanna do anything to it? Well, I can see down here that we've got a quantity of 100 and a ticket price of 15. You know what? 15 is just a touch much, even for 100 tickets. I wanna make it one. One euro seems reasonable to me as an attacker. Hopefully this works. If I hit forward along and I'll turn the intercept off, we will zoom back out, go back to our application and see what the result was. And you'll notice it charged me a hundred euros per, for all 100 tickets. It should have been 1500 euros. But since we changed the price, it charged me a lot less money for those tickets. I could have put zero if I wanted to be really nasty about it, right? And it would charge me zero money, 
for 100 tickets and I got them all for free. But here I was at least benevolent enough to pay him 100 euros per uh, for 100 tickets. But there you go, that's an eye door. That's that insecure direct object. I had direct object access to that reference, which was to the ticket price. I should have never had that capability to see into that, but some developer probably just assumed that no one's ever gonna see that, therefore I don't have to worry about it. But enterprising people such as ourselves can get access into those things, make those modifications, and change the outcome accordingly. Well, there you go. That's an eye door, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. We got more stuff here at our IT Pro TV YouTube site, so be sure to subscribe and check us out. Until then, have a great day.